All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, our next guest made a record 629 appearances for Leeds United in his day. He was capped 35 times for England, and he holds a World Cup medal. February 86 took over as manager of the Republic of Ireland team, and with the European Championships next June, he's already setting his sights on the World Cup, the draw for which takes place tomorrow. Very important and draw indeed. Would you welcome, please, Mr. Jack Charlton? Never met the man before. Look at how are you? How are you? Sit down there. That's Phil Coulter. Did you two meet each other outside? You I did? nearly made that man a star years ago. What do you mean you nearly made that man a star? Years Amongst ago? his other accomplishments, he also has a silver disc. You didn't know about. I didn't know about that. Well, no, what's that? He was part of the England World Cup squad in 1970 when I made a record called Back Home, which was number one single and number one album. He was the star of the choir, that man. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I was one of 15. Yeah, but you were louder than the rest, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Jack? You're just back from Dubai, for heaven's sake. Yeah, so if I start yawning, it's four hours behind. It's three o'clock in the morning there. Uh, you have, yeah. You're coming straight to us from there, yeah. Right, yeah, right, right there. Right back to well me. done. What were you at in Dubai, and what did you think of Dubai? I know it well. I was there for half an hour once. <laughs> I went because I've never been before. It's, it's a part of the world I've always missed. I've, I've flown through it and gone past it and landed there, but I've never actually stayed. And I got a chance to go and have a week and do a bit of work and see you again. Yeah. What sort of work were you doing? I'm not going to tell you because I got paid. Oh, I see. Well done. Well done. <laughs> so what, is there a heavy soccer there? Big, big scene? No, it was a game between Everton and Rangers. It was sort of the uh, Great Britain Championship, which you couldn't play in England because the, uh, it was cancelled, apparently. Frightened of the, the lunatics that go to the games. Yes. And uh, they played it in Dubai. Yes. It was a good game. Good pitches, good, good surroundings. Oh, wonderful. It's a, yeah. it's a marvellous place. So you, if you want to go on holiday, go on holiday. It's terrific. Yeah. What about the booze? There's no booze. It's a, oh, it's a plenty. Well, they want to take it in, but when you get there, you can have as much as you want. There's stacks of booze. Oh, I was told it was all dry. No, 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 yeah. no. Some of the Emirates are, but that one particularly is... Uh, is not. Yeah, I can I guarantee see. that. All right, now you've just won another. You've just won another trophy. The uh, the Irish Life uh, Manager of the Year yesterday. Very nice. You weren't there to collect it. Somebody has collected it on your behalf. Wife must be getting fed up with all the trophies coming home, Jack. Well, this one's glass. It's nice. It's a nice glass one. You know. If I take silver home, she goes crackers. Why? Well, you've got to polish it all. Oh. And uh, she's got loads. Of, we've got loads of silver. Oh. But glass is nice. But this one's. It's like. Uh, <laughs> You can't put anything in it. It's got a lid on it, and it's nice shape, and it's a lovely piece of glass. Yeah. It's a bit like a thing I got a few years ago. I, I got some that blue stuff. What do you call the blue stuff? Porcelain. Um, Porcelain, is it? Uh, Wedgwood. Wedgwood. Oh, Wedgwood. Yeah. I got I got presented with a, a Wedgwood thing, and I went home. I thought it was lovely, and when I got it home, the wife looked at it and she says, "Is that for to put your ashes in?" <laughs> <laughs> Probably is. Probably is. Now tell tell me about this. I I know. I was once down a coal mine, mm -hmm. and I know that your father was a miner for most of his life. 44 years. 44 years, mm -hmm. was he? It was one of the most frightening experiences I ever had. It was down in one of the Yorkshire main uh, collieries. You did go down a mine. Yeah, you? well, yeah. I, I left school, and I didn't particularly want to go away so, uh, to Leeds to play football at the time. So I went to, uh, I worked on the top. I was what you call a ticket boy, which when they bring the wagons in, empty, and then you, put, you weigh them. And you put a ticket on, and then they go and get filled with coal, and you, you make the difference, mark it on the ticket when they come out. So I put the tickets on, and I loved it, because I had a trap line as well out in the country, I had snares for rabbits and things all over the place. And, uh, and then I went down to mine for 16 weeks, did the training, and then I resigned the day I finished the training. They took me to show me where I was going to work with my father, because the laddies in, in those days in, in England, if you went to the mines, you worked at the same pit as your father worked. You're having trouble with this mic, lads, are you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. With, with, with Jack. Sorry, Jack. Yes, go ahead. Yes. And uh, they took me in. I had luck. And uh, it was blowing a gale. And I had to pull wagons round one way, hook them onto a wire, and send them off. What you call hanging on and knocking off with a handball. It's like a thing you pull on the wire. And I thought, no. And I came up and went to see the manager and put me notice in and left. Never went back again. Had you another job to go to? Well, I'd been offered a chance to go to Leeds. Ah. To, as a, 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 they call him an apprentice now, then they called him a ground staff boy. Yeah, that's for sure. And, uh, cleaning the boots yeah. and getting the jerseys right. ready and doing it all that. It was either that or the police force. Yeah. And then he became a policeman. Yeah. So, how, 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 how much were you earning then as an, as an apprentice in, in Leeds? In Leeds, five quid I got. 
two pound fifty for me board, sent a pound home, and kept thirty bob to live on. But in 1954, that was quite. You're getting the pictures for a shilling. Yeah. And that's all we ever did, go to the pictures. And did you, did you pity your father, Jack? Uh, being no, a I didn't pity my father. My father enjoyed his life. He, it's a shocking life, though, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but, but I mean, it, it, in a way, he, it changed for him because that, like, when I was, my picture of my father as a boy was, was watching him come in black and get washed in front of the fire. You know, and my mother had to wash. Well, she used to have to wash the back of his head. But she didn't, he wouldn't let her wash the round of his back. Because that was only once a week he washed that, otherwise it, yeah. it weakened your back if you washed the coldest of it. That was the, the way they did. And he used to go to my grandmother's on a Friday for a, a proper bath, you know. <laughs> but then, then the minds changed and they started giving the, the build baths and showers and things. And they could go to work properly dressed and put his mucky stuff on there. And then when he came home, he would uh, get showered and come back home again, call in for a pint then, you see. Because he couldn't get into pubs if you were all black, or the clubs. But he was all right. He enjoyed it. I wouldn't say he enjoyed it. He didn't have much choice, actually. But uh, he was a good father. We never wanted for anything. And, and you, obviously, when you, even, even when you were starting, you must have been earning a great deal more money than he was. Oh, yeah. Uh, I always remember going home one summer, and I'd just signed as a fully United as a full-time professional, only 17. And I was on 15, no, I was on about 18 pound a week. And then with me tax off, 15 pound. And, and I used to get a check for, well, four times that uh, in a month. Yeah. And I was, he was uh, bringing about 12 pound home from the pit. And I was getting 15 quid a week at 17. For doing nothing? Yeah, for doing nothing during the summer. That must have been pretty heartbreaking for him. Mine, I got 18. Yeah. I got 20 during the playing season. Yes, yes. And that was it. Yeah. So you would be, you're, you're very much, a, you have a great affinity with miners and, and, and Scargill and so on. Are you, are you a Scargill man? I'm a, f I'm, a, I'm a friend of Arthur's, yeah. I lived near Arthur for a long time in Barnsley and uh, we, we became reasonably good pals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I lived there uh, during the miners' strike and uh, being from a mining village, I was very sympathetic with the miners. And I, I still to this day think that Arthur Scargill has been very much maligned in England and uh, over the whole business. You know, people... Arthur did what he had to do for the miners, and uh, although it didn't work out well for him in the end, the only mistake he made, I felt, was that he didn't leave himself a way out in the end. Right. But his principles were right, yes. and uh, everything he said, that they were going to close pits, and Margaret Thatcher kept denying it, in fact came true. And in years to come, when, when they write the history of the, the strike properly, you know, I think he'll come out with a lot of credit. Do you think he'll get back now? I hope so. Do you think he's still popular with the main body of miners? Well, I don't know at the moment because yeah, I don't live in Barnsley anymore. Yeah, I live in Newcastle, yeah, sure, and the yeah. mines in Newcastle have all gone, yeah. virtually. Yeah. But there's still one or two in uh, the area. But Yorkshire's still really the big stronghold of mining. Mm. Very militant people there.